I've got an excellent video for you today. We're going to be taking a look at the Thermorite TLS12. It's the W edition, and I think this is going to be pretty exciting. I think this is going to be a pretty good one, so I hope you join me on this adventure. So first a little bit of how does it compare against other Thermorite fans? Well, here are some previous tests I've done with other Thermorite fans and how they compare against with one another in cooler testing, in case simulation testing, noise normalized, and in my CFM test. Let's get on with this video. I hope you join me for the rest of it and uh, see all the beautiful graphs that I created. So first, a little bit of spec information. It has a fluid dynamic bearing. It's a bog standard 120 millimeter class fan, pretty standard amperage. Peak RPM is 1,500. It's airflow, it's static pressure, and it's noise level by their ratings. The first test is my case simulation test. And the way you use this is, what size computer case do you own or do you plan on buying to use this fan in? If you've got a small form factor, you want to pay attention to the six inch mark. This, again, this is assuming that you've got a front to back airflow type case and you've got a CPU air cooler. So a six inch mark would be an ITX case and it would fit 120 millimeter class fan for its length. The nine inch mark, Oh, before I move on, the 60 mark is also represented by a short throw distance. By this, I mean having your uh, fans at the bottom of your case and blowing up towards your GPU. The 60 mark would be very relevant for that type of situation. The 9 inch mark would be a compact tower. So it would be able to fit 220 minimum class fans in the floor. It would, floor, it would still be able to fit a um, standard ATX motherboard, but the GPU length would probably be the exact length of the motherboard without any extra room around it. Again, assuming that front to back airflow where the nine inch mark is the distance from the fans to your CPU air cooler, the rough position of that socket. Then we have the 11 inch mark. This would be your bog standard mid tower cases like Corsair 5000 series, uh, Meshify 2C, I think, uh, would fit into that category. So. BIF would be able to fit 320 millimeter class fans or a 360 radiator, but not much room beyond that. And of course, if you're looking at uh, 140 millimeter class fans or multiples of those, it would fit in between each of these categories. And then at 14.5 inches would be our truly large towers. Something like the Fractal Design Torrent would fit into that size category you'd be able to fit 340 millimeter class fans in the floor of that case. So depending on what size computer case you actually wanna buy is what which air data point you wanna pay special attention to, or if you wanna use these fans in some sort of crazy testing that you have some idea for. So next, how do we compare this fan? Well, I have a control fan. It is based three parts A12X5 to one part A14, and I blend them together to create a composite 130 millimeter class fan so that I get the best of kind of both worlds blended together. So that is this teal line. I do apologize. This is a little bit of an older uh, slideshow and recording where I haven't updated it for the new shapes that I'm implementing in newer videos. I do apologize for that, but know that this is something that I will be doing going forward and I'll try to use the mouse cursor as best as possible to dry out, draw out which uh, line I am indicating. So the S12 is outperforming my control fan in noise normalized results. That is an excellent case. At 100% PW fan signaling, it is about equivalent to my control fan. It's not as good at the short throw distance of six inches, but it's doing well everywhere else. And if we take a look at it in compared to other fans I have tested at noise normalized results, it is kicking butt. Look how high far it is above every other fan I've tested. Whatever Thermorite did to this fan is amazing for noise normalized results. Have it at 100%. Well, this is where the fan is not quite as good. It just doesn't have the maximum RPM to be truly effective. But it is keeping up with the vast majority of these other fans. Like right here is the P12 from Arctic, this blue line. The P12 only does slightly better than it at 14.5 inches. So down here, this sort of pinker line I do apologize, it is very similar in color, is the TLG12. And above it, this more orangey color line is the Wander Snail. I do apologize, they're not shapes. It is something that I'm fixing in future videos, but as this channel is 
basically unpaid, unsponsored. I just don't have time, resource to go back and fix every single one of these uh, videos that I haven't implemented. I do apologize for that. Uh, up here at the shorter throw distances, so the six and the nine inch marks, the um, Gentle Typhoon is better than the TL-S12, but as we get into bigger cases, there's almost no difference. So, I mean, if you're looking at a big case, the S12 may be effective enough for your situation. And it's noise results. So this is taken at the nine inch mark, airspeed versus decibels. The nine inch mark was chosen because fans that tend to do poorly tend to drop off between the six and the nine inch mark. So that's why that was chosen. So it is by and large better than every other fan I've tested in, in noise. It's just lacking in RPM. It just doesn't have that same top end that many other fans have. And you can see where it compares to other ones. And one of the fans that I uh, really like is the Unifan P28. And it just blows that one out of water. The P28 is sitting right here. This uh, greenish line. Right, now we're on to cooler testing. So once again, we have it compared against my control fan, which is three parts A12X5 to one part A14. And on the vertical axis is meters per second in both these graphs. And for the left side, it's RPM for the horizontal. And for the right side, it's decibels. So the first graph on the left side is basically a blade efficiency graph. It is how good is this blade design at moving air? regardless of anything else. And the S12 is more efficient than my control fans, which puts into a good category. So if it's, you're looking at blade design for moving air, you're a fan of the fan showdown, it'd be a good fan to base something off of. How about noise results? Well, like we saw in the case simulation test, it is doing quite well. It is outperforming my control fan uh, ever so slightly, but definitely, uh, definitely a readable amount. How does it compare against other fans I've tested? Well, in noise noise results, it is doing really good. We got the TLK12 above it, the Masterfan SF120M, but they're, they're all at 1.3 meters per second. The A12X25 is at 1.3 meters per second. So noise noise results, the S12 is amazing. And uh, depending on your cooling situation, that might be enough for whatever system you're currently running but as we're going to see if you're going and pushing really high-end components the s12's rpm just isn't high enough to really uh cool down powerful systems mind it's really close to other computers other other fans like the a x25 only moves 0.1 meter per second more air but that 0.1 meter per second is like 10 watts, 15 watts of extra performance that you're leaving on the table. So that's what uh, this graph over here indicates. I did a bunch of testing on my specific cooler, the U12A, for my specific system, the uh, 11700K, for what wattages equated to what airspeed going out the back end with just one fan. And this is accurate within plus or minus five watts of each of these values from one fan to the next. So you can, you can use that to uh, scale what you have if you have the same system as me, meaning CPU, and the same cooler. If not, the scaling of these fans would be applicable to you. How about noise results? Well, once again, the S12 is doing really well. It is not the high end, but it is doing good enough, which is good enough. But once again, it just lacks the top end. So if you can live with that uh, reduced maximum airspeed, it certainly would be a good pick. But it's pretty interesting. Most fans have four struts. This one only has three. So the reason I bring that up is every time there's a strut is a chance for the blade to interact with it and cause noise. By having fewer struts, it causes fewer interactions. Uh, the struts themselves are actually 
triangular in shape. I don't, the blade design on it is very much an airflow style fan because you've got these fairly large gaps between each of the blades. How it is a seven blade design. Most modern fans are like nine blades. Now you do like odd numbers because it just causes um, less chances for vibrations. What's it called? Like eigenvalues or something. Uh, it's been a while. I would need to look it up from my math class textbooks. Uh, but anyways, uh, the frame itself is squared off. So if you were to stack them next to each other, it could create a pressure seal. But the, again, the blaze design isn't designed for that. All right, this is what the RGB looks like on this fan. <laughs> Right now, I just have it doing rainbow colors. It just has this little bit of light ring. Let's take a look at the other side. Hopefully, it don't cause the fan stick. Very similar. So that's not a bad overall appearance. It's going to get a much more subtle look than many other fans. And now for my least favorite test. This is CFM testing. And the reason I don't like it is it's basically a scientific exercise. By that, I mean you have a fan, you blow it down a tube, you measure the airspeed coming out the tube, you know the... You know the surface area of the tube, so you know how the cubic feet per minute coming out of it, and you can do all the measurements. Do apologize, this shouldn't be meters per second, it's CFM, and for some reason it didn't cover itself up. And this graph is on the right side is decibels. Apologize for those minor errors on this graph. So in terms of blade design, it's lined up perfectly with my control fan. In terms of noise results, it's slightly better than my control fan at low air speeds. But as things get faster, it becomes worse. As compared against other fans, well, it's right up towards the top in noise normal results. So that is very good. Let's keep things moving. Um, and at 100% PWM fan signaling, it is towards the bottom. It is right in line with other 1,500 RPM fans, which makes a lot of sense. So here it is not punching above its weight class. It is right where it belongs, which makes sense. Um, now we have CFM versus decibels. Decibels is horizontal, CFM is vertical. Apparently the decibel label vanished. Anyways, um, it's still a good result. It's not as high as on other other graphs or that we saw earlier, but it's certainly very reasonable. Now, this is where this fan shines. When I went shopping for this fan, it was $7. Note, prices changed. This is a real retail price that I could find. It didn't appear to be on sale. If my pricing does appear to be incorrect for North America, do please let me know. And, um, well, I guess I'm not going to re-record this, but I'd like to know, you know, have that in the chat so that people know what to expect. But this was the price that I saw. And as a result of that price and the performance of this fan, this thing is a monster of value. At $7, it blows everybody else out of the water. Uh, several other fans that were very high value for case airflow were the TLG12, the TLF12. Where is the TLG12? I'm not seeing it right now. Um, and even at 100%. So this thing is just moving a lot of air at not an expensive price. How about at the 11-inch mark? Ah, there's the TLG12. Maybe I was missing it on the other graph. Um, it is still a beast. For $7... You get RGB and great airflow. I, I almost forgot to iterate this. Value proposition isn't, is not performance. It is performance per dollar. So a fan that is cheap enough, even if the performance is crap, will rank well on these graphs. This fan performed well and is relatively inexpensive. So it's... A beast here it, that's why it's ranked so high and you can see other fairly high picks it's not quite as good at the 11 inch mark at 100 percent because of it that limited rpm but it's still the top ranked fan right now how about in cfm testing well at noise normous results it is the best there are other fans that are close behind it but it's right now ranked the best at 100%, it's dropped back a little bit, but it's still doing really, really quite well. The TLG-12 is the only one that uh, surpasses it. There are others that shoot very close to it, like the uh, Storm T3120. At, or with the CPU Air Cooler, the TLS-12 is my new top-ranked value fan and noise numerous results. 
The TLG12 was the previous one with the sickle flow right behind that. So it's doing really well. Um, the only reason I would say not to get it is because of its actual raw performance at maximum RPMs. But if what you're doing is shopping for the cheapest system possible, uh, I don't think you can go wrong. At 100% pedal and fan signaling, it's kicking butt and taking names. It is the top ranked fan. And that brings us to the end of the video. This is the raw data. The raw data does belong to me. If you want to use it for your own particular purpose, you are more than welcome to do so. And that brings me to final notes about this channel. Right now, this channel is unfunded and uh, has only started to get some slight monetization from YouTube. If you like what I'm doing and you've got suggestions on ways that I can improve it or for fans who would like me to test in the future, you can leave those in the comment section down below. I am here for the tough love or whatever fans who would like to see me test. Uh, because I'm here to grow. Uh, also, if you like what I'm doing, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button and consider joining me as a Patreon or a YouTube member. That money does go directly into this channel and buying upgraded equipment because I do want to build a noise isolating chamber. Basically, I'm waiting for uh, the money to come in to reach a critical mass that I can upgrade to revision three of my testing methodology, which would have a whole lot of substantial upgrades as well as allowing me to expand to test more and varied type things, like I'd like to get into CPU air cooler testing, uh, using my background as an aerospace engineer. Uh, so I've got a strong fundamentals in computational fluid dynamics, as well as thermal transfer. Uh, anyways, I do thank you very much for making this far in the video. I appreciate each and every one of you, especially my YouTube members and uh, Patreon members. You guys rock, and uh, it's helped me acquire small pieces of equipment along the way that I'm going to be implementing into future testing. Anyways, thank you very much. Have a great day, and I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.